So now I want to move into our last topic, <coughs> the idea of potential. The idea of potential. So what do I expect you to have? What do I expect you to have is that you should have been reminded in your prep that the work done by a conservative force is like the electrical force is given by the negative change in potential energy. This was a 131 idea. I threw it in the prep to sort of remind you that the work is the negative change in potential energy. You should know that the unit of potential electric potential is volts. The unit of electric potential is volts. We'll talk a little bit more about what that means on Friday. And then you should know that if I put a charge in a potential, it experiences a potential energy. You had a few problems where they gave you V, they gave you Q, and they asked for potential energy. That's ex essentially what I expect you to have. What are we going to be adding? We're going to be talking about what potential is. So when we first started electric field, we spent a whole day just sort of playing with the idea. We're going to repeat that with potential today. And we're going to, again, be using our understanding of gravity, because we walk around in a gravitational field all the day, to help us out. And then we'll get to what is the potential energy, I mean, the potential generated by a point charge. Next time, we'll get into how potential and potential energy are related and some applications. OK? All right. So before we get to potential, I want to do a quick reminder of forces versus field, because we're going to be making a parallel here. We're going to be making a parallel here. We're going to begin with gravity. How do we think of things? We say, OK, the Earth generates a gravitational field pointing down. I put a ball or an object in the field. It feels a force, mg. For electricity, same sort of dance. We think about a source, like a nucleus, generating an electric field. I put another charge in the field, and it experiences a force. Okay? The field exists independent of whether I put something there or not. The field is there, and then when I put something in it, it experiences the force. Okay? So that's, now let's move to potential and potential energy. Think back to 131 for a second. So in 131, I don't care if you took it here or somewhere else, I'm sure you did this, you begin with forces, and you talk about forces. And then later on in the course, in, a, in the case of if you took it here, unit four, you get to thinking about things in terms of energy. I can analyze the same situation from multiple perspectives, right? I can think about this ball acting under the force of gravity and accelerating and simulate the motion, or I can say this ball converts potential energy to kinetic energy as it falls, right? Same ball fall, but looking at it from two different perspectives. That's what we're going to do right now, is we are going to think about electricity and electric fields from an energy perspective. So let's return to gravity for a second. So when I place an object, like a ball, in a gravitational field, it has a potential energy, mgh, 131. For electricity, well, if I generate a uniform electric field, so in 131, we talked about a, there's my Earth, we talked about a uniform gravitational field with a mass in it. If I generate a uniform electric field between two plates, I also get a potential energy. And we can make an analogy. Gravity is parameter, so in this case mass, in the electric field charge. Field height. 
right? So just like it's parameter field height for gravity, we can say, oh, parameter field height for electricity. It's the exact same analogy. This is where the beauty of the idea of the field comes in. The fields are the same. We can make analogies like this. And in both cases, we are measuring the height, it might be pointed out, against the field direction. Right? When you measure height, you go against the gravitational field. When I measure height for electricity, I'm again going to go against the electric field. So I'm going to measure that way. OK? So you know from your reading that this is the definition of what potential is, essentially. If I put a charge in a potential, it experiences a potential energy. Or if you do a little bit of algebra, you get it to look like this, which means, so that's our definition. Now I want you to think about, I'm going to ask a, a, a somewhat tough question. Which of these is the potential, is closest to the potential for the gravity example? Let's see what you've come up with on the count of three. One, two, three. All right, pretty good, actually. This is a hard, hard, hard question. This is a hard, hard, hard question. Someone who answered C, want to explain your reasoning. You're right. Want to explain it. Yeah, go for it. OK, yeah, no, that's, that's one good thing, is, is only one of these three things can change. Say, say again, I just didn't hear you, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm, I saw a second hand. Did, did, was there a second hand? So let's, let's, let's give this a little bit of a look. Let's give this a look. So we know that for electricity, no, go back, wrong button, that button. For gravity, the potential energy is mgh. For electricity, in a uniform field, it's QEH. Potential is U over Q. Couple of things, two questions I got going around. One, V and U are two very, very different things. They're very, very different things. Though essentially the question came up is potential of what? That's a good question. Potential is a distinct concept from potential energy. If I put a charge in a potential, it experiences a potential energy. Just like if I put a charge in a field, it experiences a force. You know, it's, it, it's an, there's an analogy. And potential and potential energy are two different things that have annoyingly similar names. The other thing that came up is, yes, uh, your handwriting matters now, because you need to be able to distinguish between V's and U's. I have seen people make this mistake on exams, is they're working with a U, and then in the next line it becomes a V, and be careful. I'm only warning because I've seen it done. I like to put little tails on my U to remind me. Anyway, so that means that the potential if I just carry out this operation here, it's just going to be EH. Go with the analogy. 
The analogy was field, field. Field, height. Mass, in our analogy, is playing a similar role to charge. This is what pe you might hear people say mass is gravitational charge. This is what they mean. It's behaving a similar role. Whoops, I just made that mistake. U to V. Like I said, be careful. So potential is potential energy divided by the parameter. So for electricity, it's potential energy over the charge. For gravity, it would be the potential energy over the mass. Because, OK, my parameter changed. Don't think about the details. Think about the larger picture analogy of Q to M, G to E. There's a parallel here that we're building. So this brings us to thinking about gravitational potential. These two balls have different masses. I think we all agree on that. Which one, so flip the question. The potential energy, the potential energy of the two balls, MGH, same or different? This is not a trick. Different, different M. Same H, different M, different potential energies. The potential, however, is the same because they're at the same height. It's exactly like the field force analogy. These two balls experience the same field, 9.8 down, but they experience different forces because the force is mg. Same field, different force. Same potential, different potential energy. I also have to be very careful with your words here. OK? And again, we think of the potential as existing whether these balls are here or not. It's a real thing that's just there. And then when I put a ball in it, I get a potential energy, just like the field exists, regardless if there's something here or not. 